uh, product management director uh, for MySQL, and I am going to present a slide deck that, uh, if anybody knows Lafred, he's our famous community manager. This is something Lafred put together. Uh, I think it's 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 kind of clever. Whether I can get through it in 25 minutes, we're going to find out because it's got a lot of tips. All right. Yep. on. What's going on here? There we go. So um, I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about uh, how you can get data in or out of MySQL faster and into MySQL faster and why you shouldn't use some of our older tools, so some new stuff we have. I'm going to talk about some schema design things to think about and how to discover you know, whether or not you uh, have issues. So how to find it, how to fix it. Uh, we're going to talk about configuration. So how do you figure out you know, what the size of your workloads are so that you know how to uh, set you know, how much memory and things like that. Um, again, memory consumption, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, an alternative Linux memory um, allocator you can use that will greatly uh, improve your performance and reduce the amount of memory used as we uh, run on Linux, uh, talk about looking at your workload, determining you know, how many reads, how many writes, what's my ratio, how should I set up, and then the ugly duckling, as LaFred named it, and that's what's your, what's your worst, right? And let's go fix that, and then you know, rinse and repeat. So let's see if I can get through this. So number one, importing at the speed of light. And so MySQL, we had the MySQL dump, it's been around a long time. It's single threaded. It's not that fast. We have MySQL shell now. Um, it's got a export and import utility. Um, you can dump an instance, a table, a schema, and you can determine how many threads it uses. And this will make it export faster. And you can do that to object storage uh, of various flavors. I'm going to go fast. So that's what that looks like. But then um, when I import the data, I can conversely also determine how many threads I'm going to use to import it, right? So bring it in faster with more threads. And then, sort of related to this, right? So if I'm setting up a, a new database, I'm importing a bunch of data, I don't, I don't care if I, I have crash recovery and things like that, then I can go in, I can uh, disable a redo log, I can turn off the bin log, now I'm not going to do all that I.O. for that. And so when I do my import, it's going to go in a lot faster. So I can go in, change those settings, and then FYI, after I do that, I'm going to have to change them back and restart the server so that you, know, you obviously do want to have a redo, undo, and a bin log, right? And so uh, we can speed it up a great deal. And here, right, he's showing that he got 222 uh, megabytes per second, which probably on the disk system he had is about as fast as that thing could go, right? So that you'll max things out a great deal. All right, number three, the primary key. All right, so we have to, we want to have a good primary key, and there are such things as no primary keys and bad primary keys. So let's let's think through this. So uh, you know, obviously we store data in a a table space, and when we have a primary key, it's on a clustered index, right? That's the primary key. But we also have secondary keys, right? And those secondary keys have to refer to the primary key to find the row that you looked up if you searched a, a secondary key, right? So the primary key is always going to be used, right? Unless you're doing a full table scan or something like that. So um, if we have a non-sequential primary key, the problem is that it's, it's got to, you've got to reorder your, your tree, right? And so when you reorder your tree, this, all this pink is activity, right? And that's bad, right? And so we don't really want to do that. What we want to do is we want to have a, a monotonically increasing positive integer, right? And when we have that and we're adding new rows th with these auto-incremented things, right, then we're not going to be 
rebalancing things so much, right? So here we got a lot less pink. So that means less pink means less performance, less pages are changed. And another problem is that if you don't define a primary key, we have to have a primary key, right? So we're going to create a hidden one, right? And those are six bytes long. So it's really, um, you don't have control of the, over this thing, right? And so really, you should define a primary key. And um, even more than that, um, let's see. So how do we determine those tables? Well, we run this query. And we can determine, OK, these, these are the tables that I haven't defined a primary key. That's probably not a bad idea. Obviously, there's a hidden one, and that's a problem. All right, but now we have a, a new mode. It's called generated invisible keys. So sometimes you don't have control over the schema and things like that. And so this, this will automatically generate keys for you. And the primary key is just added to the table. And so in the case where it's on, right, and I create a table, say I create a table like this, right? So it just looks like there's name and beers there for Kenny and LaFred, who love Belgian beer. But if I show the table, right, I can see I have my row ID, right? So this, this automatically generated this row ID for me, right? And it's an auto increment, and it's a big int unsigned. And that, you know, you have to, ha if you're doing HA, if you're doing uh, DR, right, you have to have a primary key, right? So you're going to see that right there. And so I can actually get that value, right? So if I, if you do a select star, you're not going to get it. But if I, I do a select star, comma, and my row ID, you can get it. And it's, it's really important to have a unique row ID for a lot of reasons. But like if you're trying to do a data deduplication or things like that, right, you might need that row ID. And you can use that to go in and determine, OK, I'm going to remove one of those rows that's a duplicate or something like that. It's also possible to hide this thing. So some tools out there um, read the data dictionary and if this shows up in the data dictionary that, and, and you're using some sort of a, a worm or something like that, that could throw it off. right? So you can't hide it. All right, tip number four, indexes. Uh, not too much uh, on the, uh, not too little, not too much. right? So you don't want to over-index, because an index is something you have to write and maintain and all that. Uh, but you definitely need to have them. And so we can run this query, and we can determine, uh, let's see, what, what hasn't been used. And so these are indexes that have never been used. So if they're not been used, just drop them, right? If, they're not, if no query's ever used in this thing, you don't need them. So get rid of them and drop those unused ones. But then the other issue that you almost see is sometimes people create duplicate indexes on the same column, right? Uh, you don't need that either. And so we can run that query that, that I had on the previous page. And then it'll actually, the way it's written, it'll spit out, OK, you need to drop, alter table drop these two indexes because there's already an index uh, on the world city and, and on the uh, country language, right? There's two of them. Because we don't prevent you from creating two, and um, maybe there's some edge cases where you'd want to, but um, we tell you that. All right, don't forget. Uh, oh, yes, so if you've got a really big table and you think that index isn't used, uh, so maybe you don't want to drop it. Maybe you want to set it invisible and see what happens, right? So if you set it invisible, the, the uh, optimizer is going to not think it's there. But it's still going to get maintained when you do insert, update, deletes. But then all of a sudden, somebody goes, what? My, my latency on this query, it's taken forever. And you're like, oh, well, I dropped the index on it. So then you just set it on it, invisible. But if nobody complains, you drop the thing, right? So you have an option there 
to not shoot yourself in the foot because on a you know billions of row tables, creating index takes takes a while. It's a lot of effort. Also, when you go through and you do uh, an alter statement or something like that, you can actually watch and see what's going on. So, uh, if you're altering and running a, 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 a altering an index or something like that, you can run this statement, and it'll actually tell you, okay, it's 46% done. You know, we'll be done in another four or five minutes here. Um, you know, you'll you can get there. So this, this ability to, to monitor um, alter statements is, is really a nice one because there's nothing worth it. You know, it's just sitting there running, and you're like, what's going on? Is, is, you know, going, is it making any progress? Right? You can't tell. This way, you can tell. You can run this over and over, watch it and, uh, until it completes, and then you know you've got your job done. So also, we need to know, OK, what's, what's missing, right? So we can look, for example, and see if, if, if there's a full table scan, there's not an index being used. And so we can easily select from this, this sys table, right? And we can find out what's missing. We can see that this, this uh, 41 minute, well, that's a long query, right? A lot of rows getting scanned. So if you're a DBA, right, and this is the Lafred humor, but People, you might be not scared by boo, but a full table scan is terrifying. I've got a giant table. So we're going to look at this one, and we're going to look at the uh, find the query uh, that was doing the full table scan, and we see it's select from students where age is greater than whatever, right? And it's age is not indexed, and so now we know where our problem is. All right, so number five. So another thing you can do uh, going forward, right, is it, it takes a lot of power to create indexes. And so um, we can add buffer and we can add threads to this. And so, for example, this particular alter table took nine minutes, right? That's a long time. And that was done with four threads whatever that is in, in buffer size, and four parallel rethreads, right? But if I go in and I look and I say, well, how, you know, how many core CPU uh, cores do I have? I, well, I got 16. Well, I can use more of that. So I'm going to set my DDL threads to 8. I'm going to set my read threads to 8 for the 16. And I'm going to up my buffer size, because if I've got more threads, I need more buffer to do this. And so now I do it, and voila, I just did it in uh, under three minutes versus nine minutes. So I tripled my performance on that. All right, let's see. Number six, buffer pool size. All right, so it's important to know or sort of the size, how much of the buffer pool you're using, right? So if you run this query, and again, everybody will get these slides then I can see my buffer pool size, I can see how full it is, and I can see if I've got many uh, dirty pages in it, right, which I, I hardly have any in this example. So, um, and then I also may want to know, okay, how many reads to writes do I have as well? And, and if, obviously, if I have a lot of reads, I want to I make sure that these pages are hot there in the buffer pool. All right, read all, so the redo log. So um, the next thing is, okay, how, how big should my redo log be, right? Well, if it's too big, it can affect performance, and uh, I can have issues on how quickly I can shut down or I can recover if it's too big. And so if you have a peak traffic time and you run this query, right, and this particular one will show me how much, how many megabytes I'm using per minute and how many gigabytes, for example, here that I'm using per hour. And so, so the recommendation is that you, know, you, you probably need about an hour's worth. And so I'm going to change my redo log capacity to that. And whether that's higher or lower, 
it's 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 the right size, right? You don't you just don't want it to be too big. The other thing is that you know just by default, if you don't know some of these things, then let us set them, right? So just say, hey, dedicated server. We'll look at what sort of resources you have on it, and we'll use everything. Now you only want to do this on a server that's dedicated. That's why it's named that, right? But uh, we can pretty much beat anything probably you could come up with if you don't if you're not a super expert like uh, Dave Stokes or somebody. All right, so number seven, memory consumption. So um, there's a thing called a, a warm buffer pool, right? And if you're going to have to stop and start the server and you want it to still be fast when it restarts, then you want to reload the buffer pool. And so you can tell uh, the product to say, uh, I want you to dump at shutdown, and I want you to load it at startup, right? And so this is going to, I think the shutdowns will take longer, but the startups will uh, have will be performant once it comes up, right? Because now I've got the all the pages that were in a buffer pool before I shut down are in the in the NODB now, and you can look at the NODB buffer allocation size. Um, and uh, see how many bytes there are, uh, and that'll sort of give you an idea of how much is going to be written out or read in when you rebalance. All right, this is about memory consumption, and so uh, let's see. So this will give us, okay, I know. So this tells us how much memory is being consumed by the MySQL running instance, and it breaks it out by NRDB, by the different components. So it's sort of interesting to see what the allocation is, and based on that also, you know, how much RAM you have on the system and things like that. So it's just a good thing to know. Um, also, another thing that you can limit and that will help performance is that you can um, track connections, and you can also see how much limit the amount of memory they use. So one, you can set it to track the connections. And two, you can go in and say, hey, I don't want any connection going over this limit. This is probably also a good security type of uh, thing to put in place, too, because you, you want to restrict and not let uh, some denial of service attack or something like that soak up all your, your uh, memory inside a MySQL server. And so uh, you can look at your global connection, memory, and use with that particular query. Also, if, if the, somebody does hit the, the limit, um, they're, they're going to get an error, and it won't be a mystery to you that, uh, or to them what happened, right? They, they ran out of memory for that particular session, for that particular connection. Now, it doesn't apply to, the, to somebody that's a power user that has the connection admin, right, the, the root stuff. All right, eight. I've got six minutes and two to three to go. So, on uh, on Linux, you you actually have a choice of what sort of uh, memory allocator you use, um, and we have two choices. We have JE malloc, and that's good for performance, but uh, it's not nearly as efficient in RAM as the TC malloc, and that's sort of our recommended choice. And so you can upgrade your Linux to one of these. And so you just install TC Malloc, for example, this way. You edit your system. You, re re you, know, you re reload, uh, restart the MySQL service. And you start the uh, daemon uh, for the uh, reload of the memory allocator. And what you see here, right, is that um, the the JE malloc uses a lot more. Again, it, can, it performs better, but it, it's just not as efficient as TC malloc. And so really, we, we recommend you running TC malloc, and, and this will run faster than the, just the default one on your system. All right, number nine. All about queries. So uh, again, it's good to know how many reads, how many writes, 
Uh, this can tell you also whether you need to do, for example, scale out with the read-only nodes and those sorts of things that we talked about with HA um, or that the booking guy talked about earlier. And it's also good to know where those are. So are they on a particular schema? Are they on your document store, whatever test? Uh, so this is a way you can tell where these are happening and on what schemas. It may be that you decide that you need to maybe move one of the schemas to a different instance or something like that. So that's how you can check that out. And we can even go all the way down to a per table basis. We can see what each table is doing, how many reads and writes are going on on each table. And these are all sorts of things that we can use to, to think through what we need to do to have a, a good query response time and things like that. And uh, this happens to be a book that LaFred likes uh, to recommend on, on performance tuning that obviously goes into way more detail than what we're talking about today. All right, number 10, find the ugly duckling. So at, at some point, you just have to start looking at what to tune. And so, um, you know, whether it's queries called too often, queries that are too slow, doing full table scans or file sorts, or looking, you know, using a lot of temporary table space, these are all sort of things that will slow you down, right? And and really, you want the, the, the one that's using up the most, uh, saturating the most usage on your server, right? But the easiest ugly duckling to find is the one that consumes the most ex execution time, because that's most likely your most problematic one. And so uh, we can query the sys schema with this particular call. And it's going to pop out, and it's going to tell me what that query is that is so bad, right? And so this happens to be the one that it found. And this thing is, you know, 51 minutes, right? So it's horrible latency, right? This is, this is obviously an issue. But we can also look at a lot of other things. So, you know, I just looked at the ugly duckling that was a full table scan, but um, I can look at things in the sys schema that are the, in the 95th percentile, right? This is another way to find ugly ducklings. Statements with sorting, there's a sys uh, uh, schema view on that, or statements with temp table. So again, all these things are ugly ducklings. Um, all these sys views are there to just make them present to you so it's easy to find. These are easy things to query. And then you can go in and um, try to figure out what to do. So the problem isn't with the database. The problem is your query. Uh, so. Um, and the point of that is that, that you need to watch your queries. So um, LaFred wrote uh, a shell utility he calls QEP. And what's nice is that it will take a snapshot of query execution plans. It'll store them. And then say something starts to go bad later, you can re-query that. And you can see if the execution plans change somehow. And it could have changed because you, you know, index got dropped. It could have changed because uh, we changed something in the optimizer. You know, there's various reasons why that could change. But this is a, a good way and a simple tool to use that you can run. And it automates that particular process of gathering and comparing execution plans over a period of time. So we'll do the comparison there, and that's just an example. So I made it through all 10 exactly in time.